Sixty check seconds. One, check two. Test one. Test two. Cookie Hun, we're getting a little feedback because you turned down the levels on your mic. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. Hey, how you doing? My name is Raul. I'm here to get you ready for the show. I'm like the guy that greases up the pigs at the county fair. How many people we have flying? Flying solo. Great. Buckle up, Buttercup. Uh, all right. So you want the seven question tournament length game or the big twenty one question jobber thingy? Don't shake up around here. I mean, cookie is not long. Consider it done. Okay, here we go. A question pops up, you know the answer, you buzz in. You hit the button on your controller that corresponds with the answer. It's that simple. Now watch carefully. You hit one of these buttons to buzz in. Then make your answer choice with one of these four buttons here. Okie dokie. Groovy. Ten seconds. Let's go to black. Nine. All right, folks. Eight, see you on the other seven, side. Seven, Thank God. Let's six, bring in the logo. Five. Four. Three. Three. Did you get your parents to send your permission slip? Cause, you know, I just can't let you on the bus without it. Okay, just check. So it's just you playing this time around, huh? Nothing to be ashamed of. Just don't let it happen again. Well, let's get started. Category, please. This little number's known as a good beat and easy to dance to if you're old. $2,000 says you don't know this one. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. Saturday, 9 p.m. on ABC. Tonight, our metallic band leader makes beautiful music with a radioactive glow. Special guests, the Lennon Sisters. What show is this? The Laurentium Welk Show, Solid Gold, Coltrane, or Sing Along with Magnesia? Sing along with Magnesia? No, but I hear her milk is great for an upset score. <laughs> hey, got a minute? Take a look at her right answer. <laughs> of course, Lawrence Welk is the band leader, and Laurentium is a radioactive element. And a one, and a two, and... Oh, oh my God, I'm glowing! Oh, <laughs> okay, I need a category. The category is, Pharaoh, let my people go get a bite to eat. This one can net you a grand. Check it out. The pyramids were made by slaves who hauled giant blocks of stone, right? Suppose Egyptian slaves have built the FDA food pyramid. Based upon the order in which the food pyramid is structured, what would the slaves have hauled all the way up to the top? Slabs of meat and bricks of tofu, wedges of cheese and cartons of milk, blocks of lard and sticks of butter, or sheets of pasta and loaves of bread. What? Slabs of meat all the way up to the top in that blazing sun? No. Should have picked this. Fats and oils are at the top of the FDA food pyramid, meaning we should eat the fewest servings of these. It was hard work hauling fat up the side of a pyramid, but at least they got to slide down. I need a category. Here we have 
If you knew Susie like I knew Susie, this one's worth a grand. Listen up. In 1872, American suffragette Susan B. Anthony was arrested and fined $100 for casting a ballot before women were allowed to vote. Now here's the thing. If Susan B. Anthony paid her fine with Susan B. Anthony coins, how many would she need? 100, 200, 400, or 1,000? Congratulations, you're the first person ever to mix up Susan B. Anthony and Dwight D. Eisenhower. Here's what you should have picked. Susan B. Anthony was fined $100, so she'd need to hand over 100 Susan B. Anthony dollars. But even she thought they looked like quarters, and she refused to use them. All right, hit me. The category? Reading, writing, and roughage. Thousand bucks if you get it. We've all heard of body language, right? In your bowels, your colon is connected to your rectum. Considering the primary role of a colon in English grammar, what is most likely true? Your rectum contains a list or series, your rectum is a dependent clause, your rectum is a passive verb, or your rectum uses a foreign phrase or object. One of the primary uses of a colon is to signal the beginning of a list or series in a sentence. <laughs> and after a few too many trips to the buffet table, your colon will be sending signals like Morse code. <laughs> okay, pick a category. Let's blow this down and head for number five. Coming at you. Cows collect stamps too. I'm giving out three grand for a right answer. Think fast. If Elsie the cow wants to write the most impressive resume possible, which of the following qualifications should she list? USDA Select, USDA Choice, USDA Prime, or USDA Damn Tasty? Generally found only in restaurants and higher-priced butcher shops, USDA-labeled prime beef is the best available cow meat. <laughs> well, guess Celsius headed for what they call a dead-end job. Category, please. Let's see what we got going. Now, that's filthy. You get this one right, and it's $3,000. Hey, looks like it's time for another foray into the land of celebrity trash. Wow, check this stuff out. We got a leopard bikini, black nylons, high heels, some bondage gear, a little toy monkey, and a bunch of fan mail postmarked from the 1950s. Who the heck does this stuff belong to? Betty Page, Jenny McCarthy, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, or Divine? Elvira? No, besides, she stole all her trash from Vampira. Ah! Bet you wish you'd pick this. 1950s pinup girl Betty Page was often seen in leopard bikinis, black nylons and heels, or bondage gear, and in some of her photos you could find her favorite toy monkey. Like the man says, everybody's got something to hide, except Betty and her monkey. Okay, I need a category. And this one is transcendentalism. It's fondorific. $1,000 at stake on this one. Let's rock. If a sequel to On Golden Pond were filmed called On Walden Pond, what scene might you see in the film? Dabney Coleman bonding with Coleridge, Catherine Hepburn calling Saki old poop, Henry Fonda and Jane Austen sucking face, or Jane Fonda and Henry David Thoreau fishing? Ooh. 
you might see Jane Fonda from On Golden Pond fishing with the author of Walden, Henry David Thoreau. <laughs> Living in the woods with man's bare essentials, food, shelter, and a couple of workout tapes. I need a category. Well, what do we have here? Imagine what he could do with a set of power tools. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. Uh-oh, MacGyver's got his hands full this time. Imagine this. He's got a speak and spell, a coffee can, and an umbrella. If MacGyver uses these things to create the same device a popular movie character did, what could he do? Evade the evil child catcher, use it to phone home, escape from Witch Mountain, or travel back in time and meet his mom? MacGyver could phone home just like E.T. <laughs> Hell, if he had a little chewing gum, he could probably rig up his own spaceship. All right, hit me. They know if he is number nine. Well, looks like this category is big letters. And you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Okay, let's suppose that in an attempt to attract more film studios, every American city decides to construct a large white sign near their city, like the one that looms over Hollywood. If each of the new signs suffered the same fate as the original Hollywood sign, which one of the following might you see outside a major U.S. city? Honolulu, Das, York, or Cleve? Oh no, Lulu. No, but I think Paul George and Ringo might have said that once. Let's take a look at the right answer. The original sign actually said Hollywood Land. The part of the sign that said land was destroyed in a mudslide and was never replaced. So you would see a sign reading Cleve looming over the city of Cleveland. However, if the town were known as Cleve, it would attract a slew of illiterate serial killers. Okay, pick a category. Oh, you're so naughty. You just picked a three-way. Okay, this is simple, but hear me out anyway. You're gonna see a three-way like this one. If you buzz in when the correct member of the three-way is lit up, it's a thousand in the bank. <laughs> But be careful, if you don't make a correct match, you'll lose some cash every time you're wrong. Okay, party time. This lovely three-way goes by the category of... Ooh, baby, I'm on fire. No, really. And this three-way is going to be about the three words of wisdom. Stop, drop, and roll. Ready, steady, rock. That's all we got. Now, let's see how you did. Well, hello. Uh, the only thing I can say is, did you cheat? Let's check things out overall. One down, round two to go. Let's get on it. Now, remember, everything in round two is worth double, so heads up. Category, please.
This one's called Reasons Not to Buy a Watch from the Guy in a Raincoat. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Put your tray in the upright position. It's time for takeoff. If the watches in artist Salvador Dali's persistence of memory were to be promoted in a commercial, what tagline would be most appropriate? Takes a punching and keeps on munching, takes a belting and keeps on melting, takes a cleaning and keeps on screaming, or takes a whacking and keeps on quacking. The clocks and Dolly's persistence of memory all appear to be melting. <laughs> to which I say, hey Dolly, keep your swatch away from the heater. Okay, I need a category. For your enjoyment, when governments and lawyers pick on little kids, this one can net you $6,000. Hey, does everybody remember that cute little kid who sang You Are My Sunshine in the French's Mustard commercial? Suppose the state whose official song is You Are My Sunshine decided to sue the kid in the ad over intellectual property. What would be the name of the court case? Nevada versus Little Woogums, Louisiana versus the Endearing Moppet, New York versus the Singing Rugrat, or Florida versus a wad of cuteness. No, Nevada's song is Home Means Nevada, and I suppose this would be true for someone who likes taking bad gambles. <laughs> Should have picked this. <laughs> one of the two official state songs of Louisiana is You Are My Sunshine. Yeah, the other one is I passed out nude in a stinking puddle of my own vomit and feces on Bourbon Street. It's a ballad. I need a category. And I believe this one's called The Suffocation of an 80s Band. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Remember that Air Supply song, I'm All Out of Love? Well, if Air Supply were also all out of air, which of these elements would the band not have lost? Neon, Krypton, Nitrogen, or Calcium? There is no calcium in the air, so the band could not have lost that element. <laughs> but if the name of the band were Milk Supply... Alright, hit me. This category is known as Shake Your Booty with Parental Guidance. How does $4,000 grab you? Okay, folks, it's time to play Complete the Limerick. This rap by Ice Cube and Ice-T is warping the kids, can't you see? So said Tipper Gore as she started the war and burned this by Run DMC. And born was the PMRC and banned free to be you and me or and got down with OPP. If Tipper was getting down with the president's OPP, well, that's a White House scandal I'd like to see. The correct answer is... Tipper Gore was one of the original organizers of the PMRC, the Parents Music Resource Center. Their main concern is labeling albums with objectionable lyrics. But I say, anybody who wants to limit artists can their with a after two dogs are done with it. Darn straight. Okay, pick a category. Hey, alright, guess what you just picked? It's time to play Dis or Dat. And this Dis or Dat questions category is, if we're rocking, don't come knocking. Alrighty, I'm gonna list off seven things, and for each one, you have to tell me if it's a famous rock band, a form of birth control, or both. <laughs> 
As you see, each one, if it's a rock band, hit your square. If it's a form of birth control, press the circle. Hit the X button there if it's both. And to skip, hit the triangle button. You get $1,000 for each right answer, and 1000 taken away for each incorrect answer in any that you don't get to. Okay, can I have 30 seconds on the clock, please? Let's go in. The tube! Rock band, birth control, or both? Seal! Are you 46? Sponge! You be 40! IUD! This is it! Rhythm method! Six right! Not quite perfect, but you can't get any closer. Let's throw it into your score. Didn't have that before, did ya? Alright, let's move on. Category, please. May I introduce the great Latin lover, Tom Selleck. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If you were to ask Magnum P.I. about his magnum opus, about what would he most likely tell you? His favorite handgun, his evil twin IP Mungam, his greatest case, or his pet penguin? Magnum opus translates to great work, so Magnum would be telling you about his greatest case. Although on some episodes, the mustache is the best thing going. Okay, I need a category. Number 17. Say hello to all gamblers must use bidet after shooting craps. Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. Hey, remember that French guy Blaise Pascal? You know, he came up with the modern theory of probability. Well, if you go to Vegas to put down money on Pascal's wager, when might you find out if you won or lost? After you beg, after you fornicate, after you retire, or after you die? That's not right, but hey, you could try to use it as a pickup line. Hey baby, want to find out if Pascal was right? <laughs> Bet you wish you'd pick this. Pascal's wager is one approach to the question, is there a God? Pascal felt you have little to lose by going to church now and finding out there's no God later. Compared to not going to church and finding out about God during an eternity in hell. The bummer is that unlike casinos, you don't get complimentary cocktails in church. I need a category. Open wide and get ready for a complimentary soap bar? It's the best Christmas ever! And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. All right, listen up. There are 10 holidays that the U.S. government has declared federal holidays. Imagine that Holiday Inn hotels offer a sleep-free on federal holidays promotion. Which of these slogans could they not use for the campaign? It's New Year's Day, so snore away. Sail our seas on Columbus Day. Come rest in our Easter basket. Or have your Thanksgiving dinner in our bar. Easter is not classified as a federal holiday. It always occurs on a Sunday when people don't have to work anyway. <laughs> and after all those eggs, everyone wishes Monday were a holiday. All right, hit me. Step right up for question 19!
pucker up for? No more mini marshmallows for you, sister. One right answer and $6,000 head your way. Hey, is it just me or is the Swiss Miss Girl put on a few pounds? Imagine this. On her new Swiss diet, the Swiss Miss Girl can only eat foods named after countries that border Switzerland. Which of the following items can she not chow down? French fries, Italian beef sandwiches, German chocolate cake, or Belgian waffles? Nope. In case you're wondering, put away the whipped cream, sister. Belgium doesn't border Switzerland. Although, I don't know, maybe if she eats enough Belgian waffles, she actually will border Belgium after a while. Okay, pick a category. Okay, give it up for Ink and Dink a Do. Set up straight. This one's worth six thousand dollars. Okay, archaeologists, imagine this. Say you found an ancient Incan document and want to include it in an art collection. What 1970s art fad would best complement your new find? Spirographs, macrame wall hanging, ships and bottles, or magic rocks? Yes, the ancient Mayans used complex geometric figures for the record keeping, until their dumb little brothers bumped their elbows and wrecked everything. Let's take a look at the right answer. Ancient Incans had no written language. They nodded in colored string to record events and thoughts. Agnes, that relic from a noble ancient culture is kind of neat, and that fern looks great alongside it. Category, please. Looks like you've jacked before. Commit this clue to memory. It'll save your life someday. You see, the reason I'm in drag is... Yeah, yeah, everyone's got some excuse for cross-dressing. Let's just see the jack attack. You know, in its own way, that score is impressive. Most people need industrial wind tunnels to suck that hard. While you're basking in your own special glory, let me remind you of this. You don't know Jack! Great show, everybody. Lovely work as usual. Raul, hon, what's going on now? 
Hey, if you enjoyed that game, there's plenty more where that came from, babe. Just let me know if you want to play again. Are you desperate for a second income? Have a really high pain threshold? If so, University Hospital is looking to pay subjects big money for practically nothing. Twice a week I'm paid to take pills and drink stuff. You know, sometimes I'm a little moody when I come home to my girlfriend, but... <laughs> Like, that's anything new. Can't get to sleep at night? Might as well be paid for your anxieties. The glare from the lights can get annoying. But at the 20-hour mark, you don't even notice the wires and IV tubes. My kids want guitar lessons. It's, it's all for them. Why sit around at home watching TV when you can get paid to do it at a research facility on drugs? Once a month, I let med students give me rectal exams. It's not like I'm a prostitute or anything. I'm paid good money to let people probe. Ass. Call 1-800-ME-FOR-SALE and get rich quick, because you don't need to be dead to sell your body to science. This week on Zenora, Queen of Battle, Zenora and Janelle are captured. I can't believe they tied us together like this. We'll just have to writhe around until we can loosen these ropes. And a lesson is learned. Uh, oh, 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 oh. You're a good friend, Janelle. All on the next Zenora. See what's inside this month's Just For Her magazine. Ten sexy new hairdos. Fat-free entrees. Starve yourself in style. How to tell if he secretly hates you. Twelve tips for a sexy belly button. Five personality traits you should always hide. A token career article. More reasons never to leave the house without makeup. He'll like you if you put your own needs aside. No breasts can defy gravity. Here's how. Yes, you can force him to love you. There's always something to obsess about. Just For Her. Ladies, is your biological clock ticking? If so, try the new Fertility Ring. It's a mood ring that tracks ovulation. It's simple. When it's that special time, the stone is blue. The ring is blue. Randy, take me now. Uh, I'm watching the game. I said now. Okay, whoa! When you're barren, the stone is black. Come on, baby, give me something. Back off, Randy. But honey... Read the ring. No more messy temperature readings. No more counting days. Just watch for the blue stone and get busy. Whew, that was great, honey. Yeah, I bet I'm knocked up. Thanks, Thanks Fertility, Fertility Ring. Fertility Ring. When it's blue, you screw. Wow.